Hi, my name is Wojciech Mikołajczyk and I will tell you how we used machine learning to fight with the ransomware at Ignite. So, a few words about me. I work at Ignite as a machine learning engineer in a team which create some machine learning solutions to business problems. And outside work, I am playing the piano and I am playing since 20 years and I still like it. So at the beginning, I will tell you what is the ransomware, how it can be detected and which data can be used for this detection, how to build a model which detects a ransomware, how to evaluate the model, and how we build a system which works on the production. So let's start with the ransomware. What is the ransomware? It's a kind of a malware program which encrypts the files on the victim's machine and demands to pay the ransom for the file decryption. There are some symptoms of ransomware. First, there are encrypted files with usually changed extensions. To, there are some examples of known ransomware extensions. You should definitely be worried if you see those extensions on your machine. And the other thing is the ransom note, which is basically an instruction how to pay the ransom to the attacker and it it's placed in a text file so what's the scale it's pretty huge in only 2019 we had over 200 million of attacks and those attacks can be pretty dangerous it can do damage to the business for example software ag they it's one of the biggest software companies in the world and they were attacked on 3rd october 2020 it's a very fresh thing and the attacker encrypted their files the company was blocked by that and the ransom for the decryption was like 20 million dollars it's a huge money but money isn't the only thing that can be lost because ransomware can also do even damage to the people if the target is some hospital or healthcare service and here we have an example of universal healthcare services which were attacked on 27 september 2020 they are files were encrypted so the medical documentation of their patients were encrypted and when it's required to help the patient and you cannot access that even life can be at stake they were forced to move to all paper documentation by this attack and now i will tell you a few words about ignite what is ignite so Ignite, it's a company which has its own product, which is secure enterprise content governance and file sharing platform. So basically we have a solution for our customers, which allows them to share files, collaborate on files, store files in a secure and convenient way. We have a web application, desktop application and mobile application for that and we have a lot of customers which are mostly companies some of them are big companies like yamaha we have a lot of users they have a lot of files and a lot of data so this is the target that can be attacked by the ransomware and our job is to protect our customers from the ransomware. So one time the guys from business came to us and told that 
we need something to detect those ransomware attacks, but it also needs to have a low rate of false positive alerts. Because we want, when we alert a ransomware attack to our customer, we want it to be treated ser seriously. Yeah. And the only way of achieving that is having low rate of those false alarms. So we said, okay, we can build that. But first we need to know how the ransomware can be detected. So there are some common approaches. Uh, for example, we can detect the ransom node. So this text file with instructions how to pay the ransom to the attacker. If we see a ransom node of known ransomware, then we can detect the ransomware. Or we can detect known encrypted file extensions. But this is working only on the known ransomware. There is one more method which is commonly used in antivirus software. It's signature based approach. It detects known ransomware program signature. But like I mentioned before, all those methods works only on known ransomware. When we know the signature that we are looking for, when we know file extensions or the ransom node. But how to detect unknown ransomware? So there are two areas we can focus on. First is about user activity. When a ransomware attack starts and it's ongoing, there is a high activity on user's account because ransomware is encrypting user files in the background. And the second area is about encrypted files because ransomware encrypts files. So first it produces activity to encrypt files and as the effect there are actually encrypted files on victim's machine. Okay, we are machine learning engineers. We have to build this detection system. So we want it to work like that. We have some data, we put it into some model and make a prediction if there is an ongoing attack or not. Let's start with the data. The data we have that are user logs. We can see a timestamp, we can see a username, we can see a type of action performed and a target file path. There are more action types than adding a file or downloading. It can be moving file, it can be deleting file and other things. But there is a one problem with our data. It's very limited when it comes to attacks data. Because as you remember, we have a lot of users, a lot of files, they do a lot of actions, but most of them is just normal behavior. So we have a very limited amount of attacks data and we get it only because we, our support can provide to us some time ranges when some attacks have place for our customers. So how can we get more attack data? As we remember, the ransomware is a pretty common thing. In only one year, we had like 200 million of attacks. So it shouldn't be so hard to find it, to get infected by the ransomware. Because when we do, we have more data about actions performed while being attacked by ransomware. So let's do it, but in the right way. So we download some ransomware from the internet, a bunch of ransomware, different types, and we run it on isolated machine to don't infect the whole company with the ransomware. And then we get logs of ransomware attacks. So 
This problem is solved. But still remember, this is the logs that we have. We need to process them somehow between getting them and plugging into a model. So how to extract some features from those logs? We have some assumptions on how ransomware attack look like. First, it's high activity on user's account because ransomware is trying to massively encrypt a lot of files. While encryption, the files are usually moved or copied. And as an effect or that, file extension is often changed. So we want to model that in our features. So we take our user logs, aggregate them into a two minute window, and then calculate some statistics on that. And here are examples of those statistics. It's number of events performed, count of the actions of particular type, like how many files were moved, how many files were added, how many downloaded, etc. How many times the extension was changed and the most popular extension, how popular is that? Because when ransomware attacks and changes file extension, then one extension might start to dominate over other extension. So we have processed the data. So we are ready to build a model on top of that. We want to focus on this area, on the activity on user account, because the information about that is in logs. So let's build a model with using information about activity. So our goal is to detect an attack in two minute time window. We took a logistic regression as the baseline model and tested several models against that. We also want our model to be quite simple and working fast because we, are, we have in mind that we want to go with that on production. So we want the predictions to be made fast and effective. Okay, and here's the evaluation. We can see that random forest metrics are better than linear regression and they are pretty high. The most important metrics for us are precision and recall. And precision is important because high precision means low false positive rate. When we predict something as attack, then it's it's high chance that actually there is an attack. And we also need a high recall to do not miss some attacks to detect most of them. Choosing the random forest model have also one thing. It provides some feature importances. So we can inspect top three features and we can see that it's the number of action moved, the number of events, and the numbers of extension change. So those features confirms our assumptions. So the schema for now looks like that. We take user logs, we calculate features on that. We go to the model, to our random forest model, and we have a prediction if there's an attack or not. So, okay, can we deploy it now? To answer this question, we need to get an answer if we meet those business requirements. So if we can detect ransomware attacks and if we provide a low rate of false positives. So let's evaluate the model. Here we can see of evaluation on attack data. We can see two charts here. The upper one is about our predictions the bottom one is about real attacks. This red bar indicates that there is an attack here. The empty space that there's no attack. So 
first let's look at real attacks we can see that here actually is an ongoing attack let's look at our predictions and we can see that we detect it pretty well we are missing maybe first two minutes but it doesn't matter we also here can see some false positives so let's make another evaluation on normal behavior data we can see that there's no ongoing attacks here but we detect quite a lot of attacks and we should do something with that so how to reduce the number of false positives we have a hypothesis that sometimes user can have spikes and it's totally okay because maybe the user is working intensely on some files and is moving renaming them and then he maybe checks on emails or doing other things so maybe those spikes are okay and we don't want to report each of the spike as an attack so we came up with idea of smoothing window we take our features of two minutes and make predictions for five of them and then if here more prediction is like there's no attack then we don't raise an attack alert otherwise if more predictions are that there is an attack we raise an alert so the schema looks like this we take logs calculate features feed it into a model then it makes prediction and we are applying smoothing window on the top of that so are we ready to deploy now let's see here's the previous evaluation it's without smoothing so we can see here a lot of false positive alerts while there is no attack and after smoothing we can see that it's clear it looks really nice no real attack no positive no false positives predictions here but let's understand why the second point is so important the low rate of false positives it's important because ransomware attack is a pretty serious thing when we report to our customer we need to be 100 percent sure we want our customers to trust us with those predictions so we really cannot give false positives to them so let's just ensure on another data on normal behavior that we won't raise a false positive alert and we can see that actually we do we raise some false positive alerts why there's no attack here so this is not exactly what we wanted to achieve so how to reduce the number of false positives even more remember our hypothesis that sometimes user can have spikes in their activity and that's totally okay so maybe they can have longer spikes for example maybe when they are renaming massively all their media files it can take some longer time and it's a longer time with quite high user activity a lot of file moves a lot of renames so maybe that's why our model predicts it as attacks and even if it uh, even after smoothing it's taking longer than 10 minutes at all yeah so maybe we need now to focus on this if the user files are getting encrypted so how to detect if the file is encrypted we can use entropy measurements entropy measurements are some statistics calculated on file content on value of file bytes in the table we can see those 
entropy measurements. And here are files on this light green area that are encrypted files and on the white background, normal files. Let's focus on this three square column. We can see that for normal files, the value is much higher than for encrypted ones. So we should be able to determine if the file is encrypted or not based on those features. But we need to be aware of a special type, let's say, of archives. Let's see, here we have two archives and let's look at their G-square value. It's somewhere between the normal file and encrypted. But okay, so there's something that we can tell if the file is encrypted or not based on those metrics, but we don't want to write a bunch of ifs for that. We are machine learning guys, so we want to train the model. So we actually trained the model, an XGBoost model, trained on three classes, on the normal files, encrypted files, and archives. We evaluated it and we can see that the metrics are pretty high. So we can go with that. But now we are doing something with files and we need to be aware that when we have a big scale, a lot of customers, a lot of files, then it's, we need to be careful to don't kill the production. So we need to optimize this as we can to touch as little, as small number of files as possible. So here are some user files. We will sample some files from them and check with our model if they are encrypted. If most of them is, then we raise an attack. Otherwise, we don't raise an attack. It's, it's okay because files are not getting encrypted. And the other thing we did is we took only first megabyte of file and ignore the rest of that. Because we made some experiments and one megabyte is enough to determine if the file is encrypted or not. So this is how our detecting encrypted files look like. First, we sample some files. Then we calculate those entropy measurements. We go with them to the XGBoost model and have a prediction are the files encrypted or not? And so are we ready to deploy now? We need to go back to our previous example of false positives even with smoothing on this another data set. And let's check it again with our file encrypted detector. And we can see that here there is no attack because the files are not encrypted. So now we are finally ready to go to production with our solution. So let's go on production. So this is the first, let's say, stage of our system. We take user logs, we calculate some features, then the model, the random forest model makes some predictions and the predictions are smoothed by the smoothing window. And then we have second stage, which detects encrypted files to ensure that if we want to report, there actually is a ransomware attack. So we are sampling files, calculating those measurements, using our XGBoost model and have a prediction. So the whole system architecture looks like that. Here's the first stage. We make a prediction if there's an attack. If no, then okay, we return, there's no attack. But if here after smoothing, we detect an attack, we go here to sample files, get those measurements, get prediction by XGBoost if files are encrypted. And if more files are encrypted than unencrypted, then we raise an attack alert. 
To build the system, we used Python with Flask Web Framework and built a Docker image and deployed it on Kubernetes and everything is on the Google Cloud Platform and it allows us to handle auto-scaling and other things. So it can be deployed on the large scale and it handle the traffic. So basically, this is a game over for the ransomware at Ignite because we've built a system which can detect the ransomware, then we can block the user. And even if the ransomware made some damage, then we can revert the file for the user because we stored the previous version. So that's how we protect our users from the ransomware. Are there any questions? Thank you. And that was <clears throat> fighting ransomware with machine learning, zero day ransomware detection at Ignite. We've got uh, Wojciech here, our speaker. Hi, Wojciech. Hi. Hi, cool. Okay, we've got uh, many questions in the chat. Let's start. Um, all right. Uh, Piotr asks a very cool question. How would the strategy change if you would like to detect a malware which is not ransomware? Would you still focus on the system's behavior? Um, hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting question. And I think the answer may be very broad. So my first two thoughts are, um, it might work. I, I think it might work um, uh, using system behavior and try to model some specific behaviors or on, for example, some worms and then train the model for that. And it might be a one approach and another may be um, some kind of an anomaly detection. Uh, for example, when, when we have a, a bot and the victim's machine uh, is a part of some DDoS attack, then it can be detected as an anomaly. So I, th those are my two first thoughts, but I, I think uh, th there might be more approaches. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a very broad uh, topic, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Very good question. I, I guess it was very interesting. Um, okay, maybe now my question. Um, you have chosen a very specific time window, two minutes. Why is that? Okay, so uh, as, as I remember, because we made it uh, some time ago, we did some experiments from, I think, around one minute time window to uh, up to 10 or, or maybe something more with step of one minute and made several evaluations and checked our metrics and uh, two minutes window was um, optimum for de de detecting attacks because like uh, I mentioned in the presentation, we applied of their smoothing window and, and something to, to eliminate some false positives. So we wanted to have more false positives and also more recall at the beginning to then filter out uh, uh, false positives. So yeah, as I remember, <laughs> uh, the two minute window was, was optimum. Okay, cool. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning the statistics of uh, 200 million uh, ransomware attacks, attacks in general. Um, mm -hmm. Are the statistics mostly focused on business or also individual users? Okay, uh, I don't have this information. I took it uh, from statista.com website. They provide some statistics on that, but then I didn't uh, see their um, mm -hmm. a, a split, yeah? How, how many to business, how many to, to private? So uh, okay. I, I, think, I, I think it's mixed. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and Jakub also um, asks, it seems like you've got a nice example of a trade-off between uh, accuracy and false positive, false negatives. Did you get a false negative on an actual attack? Okay, during the training, 100% uh, yes. But for now, as far as I know, we, uh, we usually don't miss an attack. Maybe we missed some part of it at the beginning, in the middle, at the end, because uh, also as I show on, on some of those charts, sometimes we miss some time of attack, but the, the most of it is usually uh, detected. So, 
Okay, cool. And I've got one more question from myself. Um, I think the project was very cool. I'm, I'm wondering um, uh, how much research was put into the project or how, how different it is from the industry standard? Um, okay, so uh, first of all, we wanted to, uh, yeah, our goal was to detect unknown ransomware. So we didn't uh, touch those methods with those ransom nodes and encrypted files. Um, yeah, we, we, we made this research some time ago. Um, as I remember, we looked into some uh, papers around that and then built our approach uh, based on that and based on our intuition and experiments. Okay, cool. But is the project completely different from what we had previously? Or is it kind of similar, but with some improvements? Okay. Uh, in I think it's. Uh, I, I don't want to, uh, to to lie here, <laughs> and okay. to, to be honest, I I'm I'm not one hundred. I, I didn't compare it. Uh, you know, in, to be one hundred percent sure that it's a novelty approach, but um, yeah, it's a, a lot of our ideas, and I have. I think we didn't yeah, copy and modify something that we invented our approach. Okay. Cool. 